pour it as well. Why don't you let go to that person's hand? Why don't you put your hand on your heart right now? And I want you to say this after me. Jesus, Jesus. my ears are wide open. My heart is receptive. I give you my full attention. I push away all concerns and all distractions because I'm a worshiper. And I adore you this morning. I've come to hear your word. I've come to give. And I've come to receive. And come to receive all that you have for me. All that you have for me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And amen. Amen. And hug three people and tell them that they're the best looking people you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> <laughs> You guys have taken offerings every service. Well, here, here's why we take an offering in every service. Because I know that I'm going to be blessed by my giving. I'm going to be blessed by my giving, and I want you blessed. And uh, I'm hoping and I'm believing that my house that's on the market for a million dollars in Florida is going to sell for it. Before the end of the year, Can you believe God for that. One? Yeah. And then I'm going to buy more houses in Tucson. Yeah. 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 I am. I am. I'm going to buy ten houses in Tucson. You know. So praise Jesus. But we're going to. We're, I want to teach you something that I, I really love. Meliana touched on it last night when she was taking the offering. But it's interesting because in the Book of Luke, it talks about this very. I mean, Again, when, when the when the when when the New Testament author extracts from an Old Testament story, that's the best commentary. And so, Luke, Doctor Luke, is writing is writing uh, to us, and the Holy Spirit is giving him revelation. And I love this verse found in Luke chapter four, verse twenty-five. But I tell you truly. Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah. Yeah. Everybody say many widows. Many. So in other words, there was a lot of people in Israel in the same condition of that widow woman in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. Right? So there was a lot of, with families in the land, yeah. there was a lot of widows. So there was a lot of needs yeah. in Israel. Right? right? Yeah. But notice what it says here. When the heaven was shut up, I mean, when you hear that word, it doesn't shut up. I don't like doing that word. That means there's no blessing. There's no rain. There's no prosperity. When the heavens are brass, there's no answer to prayer. There's no miracles. There's no healing. Heaven shut up. Three, and, three years and six months, there was a great famine throughout the land. Now they know that even though Israel was God's people, but this particular famine had affected the entire world at that time. Yeah. But none of them was Elijah sent. Wow. 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 Except to Zarephath. Yeah. In the region of Sidon to a woman who was a widow. It's interesting. Because it's not that God does not want to take care of widows and orphans. So why did Elijah leave his homeland to go to the Gentiles? Because God knew that this woman 
would respond to the word yeah. of the Lord. Yeah. She'll respond. Yeah, very good. Despite the famine. Yeah. Despite her conditions. Right. Despite that Meliana said her plan. Right. To eat her last meal and die. Mm -hmm. But he, he knew already. Yeah. Knew because God sent a word yeah. to someone who would perceive that word and, and, and not have to participate in the famine. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. And, and so it's not that God wasn't capable, yeah. or capable yeah. of helping all the widows in Israel. He was more than capable, but but because they resisted yeah. the prophetic word, they resisted the prophetic word that was that was available to them. God, yeah. God said, "Well, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna send my word to somebody who's gonna receive it." Come on, be a God help I don't know about you, but I want to be a receiver. I want to be a receiver. Of the word of the Lord. Yeah. But a receiver is to say something to hear it. A receiver is those that obey it. Yeah. 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 You know, I mean, you know, I know football season is coming up here real soon. I, I'm not a football fan, I'm, but I'm, I like baseball and basketball. But I do know enough about football to know that, you know what, that when the, when the quarterback yeah. calls the play, and the, and the team needs a touchdown, right? And they need to throw the ball across the field. That particular receiver has to run a pattern. You know that the quarterback doesn't throw to the receiver, he throws to a spot at the field. Yeah. 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 And, if that, and if that receiver doesn't run his pattern, right. come on! He, the, he won't be at the right place where that ball is. Right? 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 Right, but and then if he said, "Well, I'm not running that pattern. I'm going to do my own thing." Now I know the quarterback would call timeout in the huddle and said, "I've got someone in the huddle that's been insubordinate, yeah, right. and I need to I, because there's someone on the sidelines that's been waiting to come in the game. Come oh, on, waiting to get their opportunity. Who's been at prayer, been at practice, yeah. been giving, waiting for my opportunity? Oh, come on, get in the huddle, and get in the game." You know? <laughs> no, I don't want to, you know, so, okay, he, and, and they will say, they'll call that receiver off and then I'll come with you, you know, yeah. and bring somebody in there that's going to run the right path. Yeah. Yeah. See, and so what happened, what happened to Israel, they were in the prophetic hub. Yeah. They said, no, we're not going to do the prophet. We're not going to do the prophet. Yeah. So God had to send, God had to send them to a different place, yeah. to send them to Zarephath. Yeah. To a widow woman that would obey. Come on, I don't know about you, but I want to obey. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Here in Tucson. Mm -hmm. I, I want every widow in Tucson to obey the word of the Lord. I want every, all of us to obey the word of the Lord. So, you know what that means? That means that we give. Mm -hmm. Press down, shake it together. Mm -hmm. Give and it shall be given. Give and it shall be given. I can't out give. I can't outgive God. I, 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 I don't. I don't know what's going to happen, but I, I can't outgive God. Mm -hmm. And it's not. It's not money. My wife right. heals of cancer. That's right. It heals of cancer. You can't buy that. Yeah. You can't buy that. No. Cancer killed people. Got her hair. Got her hair. Yeah. He looks just as beautiful as I did. When I married him three years ago. I was at the market the other, I was at Safeway in Dale the other, a couple of days ago, and I started talking to the lady, and, 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 and she said, you're, you're, you're 61, I'm gonna be 61 couple days. And I said, yeah, I'm gonna be 61 couple of days. But I, I tell you, my wife's 64, and I showed her the picture, she goes, no, she's not. She said, I said, she's 64. <laughs> she says, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. Oh, I just got, I forgot. You're not going to do that. Really. <laughs> but, you know, and, and I said, you know why you're still beautiful? Because you're still beautiful. Yes. Yes. That's the only way. Hey, you can give. You don't need Estee Lauder. You save a lot of money. You don't have to go to Zipporah. <laughs> Like Pastor Lord, and got a few hours a day. That's 
But we put that up on the screen over there. I'll, I, better get, I, I, I better get away from this microphone before I get in trouble. <laughs> this one might kill me. Put that up on the screen for giving, for giving. You're making out a check, you can make it out to Citadel. If you need cash, you want to get cash for uh, Our ushers are going down on the road to get an envelope. Or if you want to give, you can give online to the Citadel Church. They're also, you can text the dollar amount. So in case, and you're going to, if you're going to text the dollar amount, let me give you, let me give you some. I, I don't know how to spell that. I do not have to spell this. I do not know how to spell million. M I L L I O N. I don't know how to spell that. So, uh, and, you, know, you know, so you know, you can text that amount if you like to. It will be used for the kingdom of God. Because how many know? You know what I believe in God? One day we're going to have an entire strip mall. Yeah, it's my mom. Yeah, because you know, I mean, a lot of times you work by church where they have a parking. You know, I want a strip mall and have a little parking. Yeah, and take the biggest room in that strip mall, put your church in there, and yeah. rent out there the room for the businesses, pay the mortgage, you know. That's yeah. that's what I have. I have a list for that. So if you have an extra, if you have an extra ten million, just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yes, Jesus. Uh, anyway, and also if you'd like to download the church center app, so like the city of Tucson, I think there's only one here in Tucson. You can hit that way, so that you can, and you'll get your credit and get an email the right text, there. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. We're going to hold up our offering. Yes. How many have the offering in their hands? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So you know what? Please hold it up Praise and pray God. for it. We'll take an offering. Oh, yeah. and then I'm going to give the microphone over to Pastor Steve. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the gift. Yes. Father, we thank you that you sent a prophetic word yes. to givers. Yes. You do send prophetic words to givers, especially when they need a breakthrough. And Lord, when we read when we read about those two famous prophets, Elijah and Elisha, we see so many economic miracles. Because that's the way you do things. And I ask you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that every person in this room that participates yes. in this specific offering, they would not participate in them. No. No, just like right that woman has everything. That's right. Thank that you. Their children, your word, your children, their children yes, will be blessed. Yes, Even Lord. when sickness and death has right. entered the house, right. it is. Jesus, Jesus. They don't have to participate. No, in they that don't have to. Because healings in the house yes, as a result of their yes, generosity. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Glory to amen. God. Amen. And amen. Glory Go ahead God. and give. Praise God. Yes, Pastor Steve, Lord, would you come up? Amen. Introduce the prince of Amen. 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 Glory, glory. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 It's been an honor to be here. Amen. Amen. With all of you, uh, we want to just thank all of you. Uh, you all are wonderful. Amen. We love your pastors, Prophet uh, Joe and Meliana, and uh, and they're just wonderful people. Uh, but we've had a wonderful time. Amen. Um, y'all. I, I know, you know, as a pastor, we've been we've been where we've been in for 18 years as pastor, and and you know you know when you have a healthy congregation, you know, and um, and then you know sometimes when it's like you know kind of needing some CPR, if you know what I mean. Um, but but what I see here is a healthy church, a, a healthy Thank congregation you, that 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 not is not needing any CPR, but is able to go out and give CPR to others, yeah. amen? Yeah. Um, a resource center, amen, for for other churches, for other bodies of Christ, amen? Yeah. Um, but you know what, it's my honor and my privilege today. And the other night when I was preaching, I, I, didn't, um, I, I didn't introduce my wife, my lovely wife, but I get to do it today. I, I wanna just, I, I wanna just say this, um, and I want you to hear this. when. When God has someone for you, um, you just know it. You just know it. You know. You, you just. You know. Um, and and I think a lot of times we we want to, uh, you know, act fast. But man, when you wait on God, 
God actually will give you the best. Yes. Amen. He has the best for all of us. Amen. Um, and, and let me tell you something. Uh, my wife, I love what Jim preached when we were in, in, uh, in uh, Maui, yeah. prophesied over us. And he said this word to Pastor Lori. He said, you are maternal. Wow. Amen. <clears throat> Although we've never had, her, her and I never had children together, I've had a couple from other relationships, but but she is a mother yes. to the body. She of is, yes, yeah, she is. Yeah, she really is, amen. Because um, mothers do something that's that's a little different than friends. They tell you the truth. You know, they're not afraid to say you're wrong. And, and you know what? It's a privilege and an honor for me to introduce her to you. The best thing that ever happened to me besides Jesus. Amen. We do that for Pastor Lord. Yeah. 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 Oh, man, he was worth the wait. <laughs> You know, uh, I'll be honest with you, I was, I, you know, they talk about late bloomers. I guess I was a late bloomer. Um, I really thought that at, at one point in my life, because uh, as a young girl, I decided, how many of you know that we're stubborn? Yeah. <laughs> Humanity, we're stubborn. When we want what we want, we're going to get it no matter what. Don't look at me like y'all ain't like that. <laughs> Come on now. Hey, when Pastor made up his mind, he was going to get a new set of Bose earbuds. He was set out for a journey to yap, yap, yap until I said, okay, go get them. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? I made up my mind as a young girl that I was not gonna go a lot of the ways that I saw my family go. I made up my mind, it doesn't mean I was perfect by any means because so many times I got off track. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I would get off the path that God had for me, but the Holy Spirit would convict me. Something that we don't talk about very much these days is the conviction of the Holy Spirit where we know we're wrong. Even though it's something we want, we know we're wrong, and the conviction, oh, I don't know about you, but that conviction power, oh my goodness, in our household, we did not have a option. Uh, it didn't matter if you were 18, 16, 7, 30, 35, you went to church. Yes. Mm -hmm. There was no option. My mom said she was the one that was the real <laughs> spiritual one in my household. She goes, the day you start paying the bills, that's when you can say what you're going to do. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You're not going to stay in the house. You're going to church. You're sick? Okay, praise God. Come on. We're going to go and have the elders lay hands on you, and you will recover. So don't even think you're going to act like you're sick and stay home, because that ain't going to happen either. Right. So you know what? I made up my mind. I'm going to settle. I'm not settling for less. Right. A couple of times I did settle for less, and I paid the price. But God says, what do you really want? And then all of a sudden, God brought this guy to my house. And I'm talking about to this house, right here in front of me. Yes. Hey, yes. I'd asked you out a long time ago and been against the rules. He was in Teen Challenge. I don't, have not waited for all my life for extra organic or alcohol. Sorry, <laughs> you are not a God. That is not what I want. <laughs> oh. Heck to the no no. You know? But little did I know God had a plan. Yes. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm God, I'm so thankful that God, yes. you know, the world says you can't ever change. Right. But the power of the Holy Spirit will change us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And it's been a wonderful, we've almost been married 26, 27 years, right? Yeah, almost. Almost to in November, we 27, and they said we went last. It's been a wonderful 26 years. The first year was pure hell. <laughs> 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 
Many times I wanted out of that. Well, I said, dear God, well, I prayed for 34 years for this. <laughs> he thought he was going to change me, and I thought it was going to change him. Yeah. All we did was just butt heads. Yeah. And then we allowed the Holy Spirit to come in. Yeah. When we took hands and said, it's not it's me against you. And we started fasting together. Yeah. And we started praying together. That's what happens in a body of Christ. You know what? We can have big green. And, I mean, because yeah. we're all different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I'm weird in a lot of ways. <laughs> you know? Yeah. When when I start for breakfast, and I get on tangents. I'll have a bagel for breakfast. And that's all I'll have for breakfast for a whole year. Wow. Or I get on snacks, pickles. I want a pickle every day <laughs> until I'm sick of pickles. So see, we're all weird. We all have different things that we like and what we don't like. And I better get on to what I was going to talk about because I'm never going to shut up because <laughs> Pastor Steve is long-winded and I got to shut up right now. Oh, <laughs> so, so I got to keep it going here. It was like, woo! Oh my goodness, here we go. But you know what? God is so good. Yeah. Because when we start coming together as a family. And it is not about color. It's not about how we were raised. It's not about money. It's not about anything. Right. It is about a family of God coming together and joining together. And we start praying and fasting together. And before long, you know what? You're my sister. I got your back 100%. You fall, guess what? I'm going to pick a little bit. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Uh -uh, uh -uh. You can't stay where you are right now. You know what I mean? All of a sudden your eyes start wondering, no, 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 no. No, Amy, you do not go that way. Uh-uh, no, girl, girl, uh-uh. That's a distraction. Come on, we got to get back on the road that God has for us. Because that was the only time. That's what family does. We become family. And we don't see color. We don't see size. Praise Jesus. <laughs> Sister Melly and I was talking this morning. We were talking this morning. When she was talking about her chemo. She goes, I told them I am not going to participate. In being sick, yeah. I'm not participating, yeah. partic little bit, participating in, in uh, losing weight. I'm not going to participate in none of that. None of that. I'm not going to. I'm going to keep my hair. Yeah. And I go, well, if that had been me, I said, I'm not going to participate in losing my hair, and I'm not going to participate in not being sick. I'm not going to be sick, but I am going to lose weight. <laughs> that ain't going to happen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. But I like pickles and bagels too much. I laugh. I said we don't smoke, drink, or cuss, but we love to eat. Amen. And we have eaten some good food since we've been here. Food of the living water. Amen. Amen. God is so faithful. You know, I want to talk to you about, I know that the theme is we've come out of exile. We've come out of bondage. Praise God. Now what do we do? Yeah. Come on. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, God, you just delivered me and set me free. Right. Or you gave me a, a prophetic word. <laughs> okay, all right. You, prophet, why didn't he, like, give me a map? Yeah. <laughs> or I was talking to a sister yesterday. God, why didn't you not just write it on the wall? Every detail yeah. I'm supposed to do. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yeah. 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 It's like, okay, now God set me free. Now what do I do? Because everything I know is back yeah. there. Yeah. Everything I know yeah. that I'm comfortable with. Yeah. Because see, sometimes we get comfortable yeah. in our bondages. Oh, come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Yeah. 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 Jesus help us. To where bondage becomes right. a normality oh, right. in our lives. God yeah. help us. Yeah. You know what? I told Prophet that we were talking the other day. We talk all the time. We love your pastor so much. And we feel like this is such an honor for him to even ask us to come and be with you guys. And we love you guys so much. Yeah. Because you know what? It doesn't matter if we're in Tucson. It doesn't matter if we're in Mississippi. It doesn't matter if we're in Shafter, California. Uh, we're family. Yes. Because we have a bond. Yes. Because you know what? We come from the same father. Yes. You know, but we were talking the other day about... How, you know, sometimes we we get all caught up in a lot yeah. of different things. And it's like we need God to show us exactly what to do. Yeah. But we get so comfortable. Right. 
and what we were that we don't know how to walk in what we are. Come on, there. that's good. Yeah. And I don't know about you, but I where's the baby boy that has his little blanket that he sucks on? <laughs> Emily's uh, you know, Emily's baby right there. When I saw him yesterday and he had that 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 blanket in his mouth sucking on that blanket, I thought, Lord, that is just like some of us Christians. <laughs> Come on. God will take us out of exile, he'll take us out of bondage. But it's like you can have everything. But this, <laughs> this helps me sleep. This makes me feel comfortable. And you can't have that. But what God is asking for, I'm telling you, He's asking for everything we have. Absolutely. Come on, that's good. Yes. Yeah. And it may feel like a sacrifice right now, and it is. It is a sacrifice. When God called us to be pastors, I'll be honest with you, Pastor came up to me and I, I married him because he was a children's pastor. I'm cool with that. I'm cool. We back the pastors 100%. I was a worship leader. We back the, I love being the background and making them look good. Because that's what God has called us to do is to make one another look good. Come on. It is, it, that is our calling is, you know what, because when they look good, guess what, we look good too. And I'm talking about when we serve, God will serve us. He is always faithful. Don't say, you know what, I'm sick and tired of serving them. You get that attitude, you will. You'll fall so fast. Pride cometh before the fall. And when we have an attitude like that, that's pride. But I said, Lord, I don't want to do. I love what we do right now. I love what we do right now. Then he came to me and said, God called us to be pastors. And I go, no. God, that's too much responsibility. I don't want that weight on my shoulders. He goes, no, God's called us. I said, I'm just telling you straight up, no. That ain't happening. I'm not that girl. I'm happy. You should have told me you were called before you ever asked me to marry you. <laughs> nope. nope, I've been in church all my life. I see how pastors are treated. I see how pastors are talked about. I see how no matter what, the pastor's kids can't do right. Come on, I've seen that. I've seen all that. We've seen some junk in the church that was never supposed to be there. And some of us carry scars because of that. But instead of letting the scars determine where we go, we have to decide, you know what? I will step into what God has for me, but I will never be like that. Come on, that's... I will do what God tells me to do, not what, what my own flesh wants me to do. Yeah. And I had no problem telling him no. Because I was 34 years old. I was already set in my ways. My favorite line to him... I love it when I have an amen corner over there. Praise Jesus. But I was, I was determined. I already knew what I wanted. And we're a stubborn people. We're going to give what we want. Right? And when he said, God has told us we're going to do this, I go, God may have told you, but he ain't spoke to me. In fact, he just kept on like a little yapping dog, like when he wanted those Bose earbuds. He was just like a yapping dog. Finally, I told him, I said, I'm going to stop the pain right now. I'll divorce you. And then you can go marry the woman that is going to do this with you because I'm not going to be a pastor's wife. I am not called to be a pastor's wife. I don't like drama. I don't like drama. I don't like to be talked about. And I don't want that responsibility. But God says, when the Holy Spirit came and stinking and talked to me, it's like... He brought this woman to our church I'd never met before in my life. And she goes, come here, baby. Come here. And I go, oh, dear Jesus. <laughs> she goes, you know, that prophecy. Sometimes you just cringe when the prophecy comes forth, huh? 
because the prophecy will usually always go against your flesh. Right. Right. Something that the blinky that you want to keep in your mouth because I'm comfortable where I'm at. I don't want to go where you're asking me to go, Lord, because I don't know what's over there. There's a lot of hurt. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I'm going to have to deal with. Is that not what the Israelites, when they were when they were brought out of exile, isn't that what they did? They didn't know what to do because here they are. They're, they're out of bondage. Now what do we do? Come on. Yeah. And what we do is we lean on our own understanding. And he says how many times in the word? Don't lean on your own understanding. Yeah. Lean to me. Acknowledge me. And I will show you the way. Amen. But our flesh gets in the way because we want what we want. Yeah. Yeah. There's a reason why we're called sheep. Yeah. I'm not the smartest. <laughs> and I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. But I do love Jesus. Yeah. And he will call on us and call on us. And when I told Pastor, I said, I will divorce you and you can find that woman. He goes, you're really saying that. I go, I'm really saying that. I was determined. But then also this woman called me forth and she goes, God has called you to do something. And I knew already in my heart. But I was scared. Because, see, I'd never been out of bondage before. Come on. Come on. And I didn't know what to expect. Come on. And I really had not really learned how to trust my father yet. That's good. Man. I trust That's me. That's good. Yeah. When really, in reality, the only way I got where I'm even at today or then was because of him. You have not got where you are today because of you. Do not mistake that you are all that. Because you and I, we sheep. Sheep, if you'll go out and watch sheep, they ain't too smart. They will just wander off. That's the reason why we need a shepherd. A shepherd and a shepherd. A shepherd. Because we need someone to keep us in the right path. Moses was that man. And God said to Moses, don't tell the people, don't ever forget the day that I brought you out. Right. And you know what? I will tell you, I don't know about y'all, but it seems to me like God never takes us the fast way. <laughs> I know. Come on. You know, Pastor, he wanted to get TSA because he 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 has a, a, the greatest opportunity to go with your pastor, Prophet John, and Dr. Bosman to South Africa. And that is such an honor for us. I'm honored that my husband gets to go. Because we're just two people that don't really belong anywhere. And we come from somewhere that's nowhere. And our name means absolutely nothing to no one. But he sees. Come on. He sees. Yes, Lord. But to me, he says, I got to get my TSA. Prophet John says, I got to get my TSA because they all have their TSA. And that means we get to go through the line fast. And otherwise, I'm going to be stuck in that old long line. <laughs> so I got to get my TSA. And I go, okay, but understand, you ain't getting your TSA unless I get my TSA. Because <laughs> when we go to Phoenix, when we go to Tucson, I'm not sitting in that long line just because you're going to South Africa and you get to go TSA. So I said, you just need to understand right now. I'm not going to get my TSA. Yeah. He goes, okay, baby. Okay, baby. Well, I thought TSA meant we could walk right through, then not check us, not even look at us, not even go. You are the king and queen. I'm going through. We are TSA. All it did was change that we don't have to take our shoes off. <laughs> That's the only difference. I walk through and I go, this is all TSA yet. I still got to take my stuff out of my purse. I still got to take my stuff out. They still got, I don't know what happened. He's the ex-felon. I've never been in trouble before in my life. I'm always the one going like this. And then they're always like, can you step to the other room? I'm always the one that's petted out. I go, he's an ex felon, why am I being patted down? I don't understand this. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes we want God to take us the expressway, the TSA way. Because after all, 
we have set ourselves apart for the Lord. He should know who we are. He should know the sacrifices we made for him. He should know how much we give in the offering. He should know how much I pray. Wow. Yeah. He should know how much I know his word. Wow. You know what? If you look at a map of the Israelites after they were brought in Egypt, <laughs> yeah. I bet that I bet that map where they all went, <laughs> it would cray cray. <laughs> Well, what would your map look like? Wow. <laughs> what would our map look like? Oh, wow. Because understand, he's never going to take us the short way. I have already discovered that. I am 60 years old, and I have finally... It's taken me 60 years to understand that. <laughs> That amen corner needs to hush up right now. I am 61. I look 71 because I passed her. No. But I wonder. I wonder what your map would look like. Some of our maps were right on target. We're exactly where God has said we we're supposed to yeah. go. Yeah. See, because well, there's always a map. Yeah. Because, see, before you were ever formed in your mama's womb, yeah. it don't matter if you don't know your real mama. It don't matter if you don't know your real daddy. It don't matter if they didn't want you. It doesn't matter if you were adopted. It doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't matter if you were given to the worst family you've ever been in. <laughs> he still knew your destiny and your purpose. Before your mama and daddy ever knew you. That right there, guess what? That makes me feel special. Yeah. Yeah. Baby girl, you are special because God knew you. Yeah. Yeah. God knew you before you were ever formed in your mama's womb. Yeah. Yeah. You see, I was an accident. Man, I'm taking a long time. <laughs> okay, all right. Baby, you're just going to sit down. I'm sorry. <laughs> That 61 got you in trouble right now. <laughs> but you see, you need to understand. I was born into a wonderful family. My mom is crazy. My mom, God has a sense of humor. My mom, when she came, she came from, actually she was born in New Mexico, but then they they ended up in Arkansas. My dad was in Oklahoma, and they came over through the Dust Bowl. And they landed in Shafter, California, because they were farm workers. They worked in the fields. They picked cotton. They did whatever they do to potatoes, picked up potatoes. I don't remember, dig pip. I don't know what the formal word is. Potatoes and cotton. They ended up there. And I was, a, I guess I've always been a late bloomer. Just call me late bloom. That's my Indian name. Lori late bloom. I just named myself. How do you like that? I like it. It means I'm going to arrive. Don't worry. It don't matter what day it is. I'm going to arrive. I may be late, but I'm going to arrive. But you know what? I was, uh, I was, I don't like to say I'm an accident, but I was a surprise to my family. My mom and dad had me later in life. And I had a sibling that told me from the very beginning, my mom had no clue about it. She would say, mom never wanted you. She cried the day she found out she was going to have you. I heard that all my life. And that's not the way my mama treated me. But understand, when I was told that so many times, I started believing right. the lie right. from the enemy. Right. And understand, we can all be used of the enemy <laughs> at any given point. <clears throat> and there came a time when I normally did not speak back to my mom, but there came a time when I was 16 and I thought I had arrived. <laughs> and I told her, I said, you know what, it doesn't matter because you never wanted me anyway. 
you cried the day you found out you, you were going to have me. She goes, where did you hear that? I said, I've heard it all my life. She goes, Lord, I have no clue. She goes, sit down. You and I are going to have a long talk right now. She goes, at that time in our life, I had never worked except for in the field. I had three kids. At that time, your dad was cheating on me, and I was ready to leave him. And I was waiting on God to show me a way out. She goes, I did not cry because I was going to have you. I cried because I didn't know how I was going to feed you. Because I didn't even know how I was going to feed the other three. She goes, that's why I cried. Not because I didn't want the life that God had given me. She goes, but let me tell you what happened. She goes, this is how good our God is. It wasn't my plan. But it was his, it was his long plan. Again, he will never take he will never take us the express way because he needs to reveal our hearts. And what he, she said is she goes, you know, the, but the day that your daddy found out about you, he stopped it and he has never cheated on me again. It brought you may have been a surprise. You may I may have cried because I was pregnant with you, but I did not know how I was going to feed you. But yet. God knew what we needed in our household to bring the miracle. Yes. But I have fought that rejection all my life. I still have to fight it. Some of you know what I'm talking about. And because of that rejection, my map has gone a little cray cray sometimes. Yeah. But see, what God is doing is sometimes... He's trying to reveal our hearts, but he's also trying to get in our hearts and our minds who we are in him. Right. Because sometimes what we do, instead of going forth in the Lord, and he takes us the long way, so we have nothing. I'll be honest with you. There is nothing back there for me to go back to. Come on. And I'll be honest with you, the path that I've taken, I don't even know how I would go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But God is saying, you know what? I'm taking you the long way, so you have no choice but to go forward. I said, He's taking you the long way, so you have no choice but to go forward and do what He's called you to do. His destination for you, you have to make up your mind. You're going to go one way or another. Now, many in, in the Israelites, what they start doing? Complain. They weren't even they weren't even humbled or honored or thankful that they had been brought out of bondage. They started they started celebrating bondage. Well, bondage was better. Yeah. It was better to have people tell us what to do all the time. It was better to be behind walls that we were couldn't do anything. It was better. What's better about that? We start believing the lies that the enemy told us and said, you know what, if we don't let go of this for what God has, if we don't become pastors. No, I don't want to be a pastor. I just want I want what we got right now. I don't want to move forward. Because I'm comfortable here. God said, if you won't let go of what I got for you and let go of what you got and get what I want, you will never make it to what I have for you. The very best. It's always going to be, there's always going to be opposition. I don't know where we got it in our heads that we are not going to have opposition. And just like TSA, I thought, I thought TSA, man, <laughs> the Seymours have arrived, let them in. And we just walk in. That's not the case. No. I still have to take everything out of my pocket. I'm talking spiritually here. Yeah. I still had to take everything out of my pocket. I still had to pray. I still have to fast. I have not arrived because, see, the minute we come out of exile, it does not mean we get to have a pajama day. I love pajama days. In fact, as soon as we get home, I'm having a pajama day. Monday, our told pastor, don't even ask me to even brush my teeth because I'm not even going to do it. I refuse. He goes, please, baby, just brush your teeth. I go, okay, I'll brush my teeth. But that's all I'm 
I'm staying in my pajamas all day long. If anybody knocks on the door, you're going to answer because I'm not answering and I'm running to the bedroom. <laughs> but what makes us feel like the minute we get out of bondage that we have a smooth selling? Let me tell you something. Anything that is great, you're going to have to fight for it. Come on. You're going to have opposition, but God says, I am with you. He's already fixed the fight. Yeah. He's already fixed every one of our fights. Yeah. So why do we look at it with defeat and say, oh, I can't get through this? Because we forget what he said. Yeah. We forget his word. So you know what? Right now is not a time for you to go backwards. Now's not a time for you to go and drink with anybody. Now's not a time for you to go smoke with anybody. Now is the time that you cut all ties with those people. And you say, you know what? I'm going forward in the Lord and I will grab a hold of the horns of the altar. If I have to lay on my face every service, if I have to lay on my face every day for an hour, I'll do it. Yeah, come on. Because otherwise we are going to miss out on the best. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. They always say, keep your fork. Well, not them real nice restaurants. <laughs> First time we went, they had a fork up here. I go, what in the world was that fork up there for? <laughs> Save your fork because the best is yet to come. We went to lunch yesterday. Everybody's looking at the fajitas and the tortas and <laughs> Enchiladas. I was looking at the chilevale. <laughs> that, that, that restaurant's a little confused because I said chilevale, they have red chilevale. No, that does not matter. That's not. That's not chilevale is green. It's like, man, y'all are a little confused. Where y'all come from, Canada? <laughs> right? Brother, I'm sorry I take this much time. Oh, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Let me tell you some things. We have to know that the best is yet to come because I looked at the chilevere for a minute and then I went to the back of the book. <laughs> there was a cheesecake. <laughs> come on. Cheesecake with strawberries. <laughs> a strawberry drizzle and homemade whipped cream. <laughs> the best is yet to come. Yeah. And understand there is not there is not one sacrifice you give up for God that He will not give it back to you double portion. In my life, all I wanted was just a husband that loved me. I wanted to work for the Lord. I wanted to lead worship just like I did. I wanted to back the pastors and take every load that I could, we could off of them. I never wanted to go where we were. But let me tell you something, if we had not stepped where we were, where are we are right now, would he have gone back to drugs? Because we not, we're not in the plan that God had yeah. made for us, even though it wasn't the plan I had, your plan will never be the plan that God has for you. But his plan will always, always, always be a wonderful plan. And I'll be honest with you, us stepping in to be a pastor has been the best life ever. Yes, Even though it's been scary, even though I felt like we have walked on different territory, I didn't want to be this cookie cutter pastor you're white, go sing, play the piano, and love Jesus. To me in the past, there has been pastors that have been cookie cutters. You gotta look like this. I don't look like that. You gotta act like this. I don't act like that. You gotta do it this way. We don't do it like that. Sometimes we get in a religious mindset. God says, I want to change your mindset. Yeah. You gotta let go of everything you've learned for everything that I have. So you know what? Today, I hope you're encouraged because what do we do now? We grab a hold of Him, and we don't look 
past today, yeah. let's get through today. Yeah. Right? And that's where a lot of us get in trouble. Pastors driving is scary. <laughs> Pastors driving is so scary. Oh, it scares me. <laughs> because he is never looking about what's in front of us back then. He's always looking or or it's like break, 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 break. I'm breaking. I go, well, they're stopping and you're not even hitting the brakes yet. Sometimes we, if we start looking to the future so much, then we get in the way because we start planning it. We say, Holy Spirit, I got it. Stay in the truck. I got it. Man, we're going to go here. We're going to go here. We're going to go here. God says, that's not the plan I have for you. And if you go that way, you're yeah. 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 That's right. Some of us wonder why we keep ending up in the same place with different people, but it's the same thing. Yeah. How did I get here again? Because you took your own path instead of the path that God has for you. God's got a path for you. And you know what? We can say we don't know, but we really do know. We really do know. It's just something I don't want to do. But it is coming a day. Now I believe that God is drawing a line in this hand saying, you'll either do what I do, yeah. what I have called you to do, or you may die out in the wilderness. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. That's where we're at, people. Yeah. Because people get ready. Jesus is coming. Yeah. There's not much time left. Yeah. So you know what? I encourage you this morning. It may be scary. Because you're going to walk on ground you've never walked on. But he says, don't you worry. I've gone before you. I will go with you. And I will go after you. But he says, don't ever forget the day that I brought you out of exile. Don't ever forget the day. Because if you forget that day, you will become prideful. If you forget that day, you will become all-knowing. You will not be humble. You will not do what God has asked you to do. But if you will never forget that day, we will, be, we will stay humble. And thankful unto the Lord. And he will be the one that elevates us. Yes. We don't have to worry about anything. He will give us the heart's desires. Yes. Amen. God bless you. I love you all. And he's 62, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great job. Amen. Hey, I want to just tag on to what uh, Pastor Lori said uh, just for a couple of minutes. I'm not going to take a long time, um, but but I just uh, I sense the Lord just you know was kind of nudging me. Um, we we talked about this last night. I said, Hey, what are you going to preach about? She said, I don't know yet. And I go, Okay, well, let me know. And, well, she never let me know. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It really goes along with, with the word of the Lord that uh, that the Lord gave me for for this congregation and for for this this house. Amen. Um, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter two. You know, Deuteronomy chapter one is uh, is all about disobedience. It's all about the children of Israel that God said, go to the land that I'm promising you, land of milk and honey. And they came back. They sent 12 spies to go. Joshua and Caleb were two of them. They came back and two of them said, we could surely take the land. And then, of course, the two uh, or the, the other 10 said there's lions and tigers and bears oh my how can we ever do this right? and because of their fear and their disobedience they begin to go around in a circle around in a circle around in a circle I, you know I, I have this a weird imagination um I always think about that, and I think about the story of them going around in this circle, and I always think about, you know, the ten spies, right, and how they must have felt every time they went around this 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 circle. Every time they went around the circle, they 
they they probably you know they probably said yeah there's the place that you were an idiot right no there no, where's that guy at? oh there he is yeah that's the guy that bad about the bad report right but they continue to go around in a circle for 40 years. That's a long time. Right. Yeah, it is. Yeah. That's a long time. <laughs> but see, I, I, I heard the preacher one time say, you know, God didn't have, God got them out of Egypt in one day, but it took 40 years to get Egypt out of them. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 40 years to get Egypt out of them. And, and really, that was the truth because, you know, they, like Pastor Lori said, they still wanted the bondage. They wanted the leeks and the, and, and the onions and all those things. But, but here's, here, here's what I want to share with you today. Because Deuteronomy is really, uh, Deuteronomy actually, uh, the word uh, Deuteronomy means the second, which he is really retelling the story. Of, of Exodus numbers and um, of Exodus and numbers of their 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 exit from from captivity and then into the promised land. So uh, he's really retelling. So it's Deuteronomy. So he's telling this story. And he's kind of sharing it again. Amen. But what it says in verse one of chapter two of Deuteronomy, it says, "Then we turned and journeyed into the wilderness of the way of the Red Sea, as the Lord spoke to me, and we skirted." Mount Seir for many days. Everybody say many days. Many days. So the word skirted means to go around. Around. We skirted Mount Seir for many days. Then in verse 2 it says, And the Lord spoke to me, saying, You have skirted this mountain. I think the NLT says, We have gone around this mountain long enough. He says, Turn northward. Everybody say northward. northward. Turn northward. Now here, here's what I want to just share just briefly with you today. Because oftentimes when we go around in a circle, right, we feel like we're in captivity to that circle. Right. We feel like we're in, in bondage or in we, we feel like we've been exiled just to that desert and we're out in that desert and we continue to go around and 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 you know and and, and then all of a sudden the 70s hit and they say when you go around in a circle now and that's my song <laughs> <laughs> but but we continue to go around in a circle but what i heard the lord say today as we're coming out of exile he said turn and go northward Amen. Now, let me tell you what north means, okay? Because I live in California, y'all live in Arizona, and you are in a low place. Are y'all with me here? A low place. But but does anybody ever say, hey, let's go down north? <laughs> no. We always say, let's go up, up, north. up north. Amen? Yeah. We go down south. But we go up north. So the very fact that the Lord is telling us today, let's turn and go northward, means that we're going up to a higher place. Come on. Amen? Means that we're going to a higher place than we were last week. Right. It means that th through this conference, amen, of coming out of exile, we've heard some wonderful word uh, from, from uh, wonderful people, amen, uh, and, and all of those words were, hey, let's come out, but now, you know, we have circled and let's go northward, yeah. let's go north, let's go to a higher place, y'all with me, amen, let's go to a higher place, because let me tell you what happens in a higher place, amen, in a higher place, you have better vision. That's right. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. You have more revelation. We were flying over Tucson or wherever we were. I don't remember, remember exactly, but there was like this big old crater, man. They were digging this thing out, and I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. When I want to see something about a place, I don't just go and look at the, you know, the, and, and try to see pictures of the houses. I go on Google Earth, and I look at the place from the top down. Because it gives me better vision of what the place is like. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 
Yeah. And so, so what I've come to tell you today is we're going to a higher place. That you all are no longer in exile. You're no longer in this valley. But you're going to a place that God is saying, come up higher. Amen. And I'm going to show you more vision. I'm going to have more revelation for you. I'm going to show you greater things. It's going to be a place that, 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 is, that is greater than you can ever imagine. But he says, come up to the higher place. Amen. Turn and go north. Are y'all with me? But I keep hearing the word of the Lord say over and over and over. Consecrate yourself. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Because see, the children of Israel, when they came out of exile, if you'll read the book of, of Haggai, Zechariah, and, and Malachi are, are three of the books that were that were written post-exile. Amen. Also, if you read uh, Ezra. Uh, and Nehemiah, you will see that it was post-exile. It was after they, they, they were released. King Darius gave them the opportunity to go back to Israel. But one of the things, one, one of the first things that they had to do is they had to consecrate themselves. They had to consecrate themselves. That was one of the first things that they did. They What, what does consecration mean? It means to set yourself apart. Yes. See, if you want to go out of exile, you, it's going to cost you something. Pastor Roy said it the best. Amen. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you to consecrate yourself, set yourself apart, lay down some of the things that, that have been you've been carrying around with you because you're out of exile. Yeah. Amen. You're no longer in bondage. But but here's how what, what you have to do to consecrate yourself is you have to set yourself apart and decide and make up your mind that you you're no longer going to go that way anymore. Right. Amen. We had a young man in our church. His name is Gabriel. Uh, he came to our church, um, you know, from the same school I went to, Yale. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, and uh, you know, in fact, they, they, he was such a good student they gave him an ankle. To, 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 to wear while he was at church. Uh, but you know, Brother Gabriel wanted to make some changes in his life. Yeah. So, Brother Gabriel got a cell phone and he put this message on his cell phone in English and Spanish. He said, Hi, this is Gabriel. I've made a few changes in my life, and if I don't call you back in a few days, you're one of them. <laughs> and then he said it in Spanish. So that everybody knew that he had made some changes in his life, that he was willing to consecrate himself, yeah. that he was not going to go to the place where he used to go. Yeah. He was not going to visit with the people that he used to visit with. He wasn't going to, he, he was consecrating, he was setting himself apart because he was no longer in bondage. Are you all me? But I was reading in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, listen, if we're going out of exile, we better start reading about those that came out of exile. Yeah. Come on. I was reading in the book of Ezra and Nehemiah, what was the first thing that they did? They built the temple. Ezra, as soon as he got back to Jerusalem, he went right to work building the, the temple. Now it took him some time because he had a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, you know opposition. opposition. You know, uh, there were people that that were that were coming up against him. They had all these things. Can I just tell you that you are the temple? Yes, wow. yes right. Yeah. And if you're coming out of exile, you need to rebuild your temple. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yes. Know ye not, the Bible says, First Corinthians, yeah. know ye not, you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. God said, listen, he, when, when the temple was torn, when the, when the curtain was rent in two, when Jesus died on the cross, it was not for man to get into God, it was God to get into man. Yeah. Amen? It was finally him saying, it is, it is finished. It is done. Now I can be reconciled to, to sinful man by the cross, by, by the blood of Jesus Christ. I can be reconciled. And we immediately, because of the gift of the Holy Spirit, we immediately became the temple yeah, right. where the Holy Spirit dwells. Yeah, yeah. It's no longer the 
the cherubim that stand like this. It is us that stand like this. Amen. That have the temple. That have the, the spirit of God within us. Amen. And we have to rebuild our temple. We have to begin to rebuild what has been broken down. Come on. Amen. We have to begin to rebuild what has been broken down. We have to begin to place the things, the, the valuable things back in the temple. Come on. Now, I'm not, ta I'm not talking about a worldly temple. I'm not talking about a building. I'm talking about your life. Yes. Yeah. What are some of the things that you have taken out of the temple that you need to bring back? Yeah. Like your prayer time. Yeah. Like your reading time. Yeah. Like, like uh, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only let us help from building others up according to their needs that they may benefit those who listen. What about, you know what, what, what about those phone calls? What about those things? What, what about those times when you were able to give? Uh, and, and Prophet, man, he preached a message a, a few days ago. What about those times when you were able to give of yourself and minister to somebody else? Come on. Rebuilding the temple is putting those things back in that maybe have, have, been, have been strewn away or, or thrown away or strewn out. Through the course of time, through the course of your exile. Yeah. Y'all with me? Amen. Amen. But then the next thing that you have to do, Nehemiah stepped in and goes, Man, our house is a mess. Our city is a mess. And I love what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah was my boy, man. He was like my ride or die. I would I would chill with him for a while. I love Nehemiah. I love the last part of Nehemiah when he when he finds out somebody is 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 uh, you know is is doing something wrong or or defiling the temple. He goes in and I love this because he says, "And I laid hands on them suddenly and pulled out some of their hair." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> boy, that's me." Right there. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's my guy right there. Man. That's what happened to me. <laughs> He says, hey, King Asherus, he says, hey, I want to go and build the wall. Hear me very closely. He said, I want to go and build the wall. And of course, he had opposition too. He had a lot of wisdom, but he had opposition. He said, I want to go and build a wall, and I'm going to build a wall that is going to protect my household. Come on. We need to build a wall. We need to build a wall. It's not that you don't, you know, you can't, you know, say to people, hey, you know what, uh, you know, I, I love you, but I can't hang out no more. You know, I, you know, I, I, I always tell people, you know, I feel you, bro, but I can't touch you. You know? Because if I touch you, then that means I'm going to hang out with you. And that means I may get myself into trouble. Amen. We have to build a wall. Yeah. It's not a wall that, that says, you know, I'm better than you. It's not a wall that says that, you know, I'm, you know, I'm holy now. And I have this righteousness about me. And I'm, you know, pastoral material. And so therefore, you know, my halo looks so good in the mirror. And, you know, but really the, the fact of the matter is when you act like that, your halo slips around your neck and jokes you to death. But it's simply a wall that says, listen, I choose to live in this realm. I'm sorry, people. You're not allowed in my wall. And you know what will happen over time when we do that? I, I, I just, I felt compelled to tell this story. Lori and I, you know, uh, we were we, we went to Boise, uh, Idaho, actually Caldwell, Idaho, where Prophet's going in a few weeks. Uh, we were in Caldwell, Idaho, and um, I have a lot of family up there. Three of them are saved. The rest of them are just a hot mess. I mean, they have no God in them, none whatsoever. One family has has been, you know, torn apart, ripped apart by a, a, a wicked divorce by the, the parents and just just absolutely a mess. And Lori and I, we went and we were just going to do my, my uncle had passed away, and, and which was his, which was kind of the, the, 
patriarch for the whole, you know, that whole family, which are all my cousins, you know. I got a big family too, you know, like the Acostas. Um, you know, we have a family reunion. We have about 200 people there, you know, all playing guitars and doing their thing, you know. But, but anyway, we went up there and, and Lori and I, um, I got up and I honored my uncle. After the funeral, um, now this is weird, I know, hey, just bear with me. Most of my cousin's kids call me Uncle Steve. That's just the way they are. Always have. I guess because we're like, you know, we're real close, right? So, um, one of the cousins, he said, hey, I got, you know, I got a bunch of alcohol in my house. I got a bunch of whiskey. Let's go drink and let's have fun. Now I got a wall. I'm not going to go over there. But about four of the young ladies, actually three of them, said, no, no, no. We're going wherever Uncle Steve went. Because we don't want to do what you do. We want to have fun with Uncle Steve. And so three of them said we're going to go with Uncle Steve then the other then there was about four more that said okay well we'll go too I have a wall but they got to come in to our area we didn't have to drink we had a great time yeah in fact, we had so much fun. One of the girls the next day goes, did you see the video we put on Facebook? They're like, yeah, you guys are crazy. She said, yeah, that was sober fun. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun you have when you're sober. But not only that, but we, my cousin Darla had had cancer. She was going back for a uh, another test. After we got done rapping and singing, oh brother, where art thou? And, you know, all that stuff. Then Darla said, I have to go to uh, a, 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 a appointment in, on Tuesday. We gathered around her and we prayed the Holy Ghost for her. They're in our wall. That's it. Can I tell you something? When my cousin Darla went to, went to the doctor, they said, what we saw last week or two weeks ago, we don't see it anymore. No. But because they were in our wall, we didn't have to duck our head or say, you know what, we're sorry. The family that I told you about that had been wrecked, that had been torn apart by a, by a evil divorce. It's just a stupid divorce. I mean, the, the, the husband and wife, my cousin, which is much, he's like eight years older than me, they, his, him and his wife, they got a divorce and the wife was just like hateful and they were, it was just a mess. And because of that, the whole family was a mess. Well, two of the girls, or two of them that said, we want to go with Uncle Steve. Before we left, that house. That whole family had been reconciled. They brought that together. Because they were in our wall. They were not outside the wall, they were inside. But I tell you this today, I want to tell and I don't know why I had to tell that story, but I, I want to tell you that when you begin to build a wall, others will want to come in. You don't have to go out there. They want to come because there's something that compels you. Two girls went to church with us on Sunday, taking notes in church, singing songs. I'm like, wow. Wow. 
Let's see Nehemiah with the wall. He said, listen, I'm going to protect this city. I'm going to protect my family. I'm going to protect the families of my household. Amen. I'm going to build this wall. And listen, I choose who gets to come in. And if we're truly out of exile, we go to a higher place. Listen, at that higher place, people can't touch you. Amen. The ones that you, you're going to have to leave some folks, like Pastor Lord said, you got to leave some folks behind. You got to leave some things behind. The Bible says in in, in uh, 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 Romans chapter twelve, it says, you know, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily besets us. Lay aside every weight, because what I learned about weight is the reason they hop those helium balloons that they blow up that look so nice that that stand up so pretty you know for a couple of days and then they kind of just melt in the you know in the sun well they have to put a weight on there because it's what keeps them from floating amen but i want to just encourage you today you're going to a higher place amen. consecrate yourself amen. set yourself apart Build, rebuild the temple. Say, God, whatever it is that I broke down, God, I'm putting it back together. Amen. And then tell yourself, listen, we have to build protection. There has to be a buffer here that keeps me away from these the, the, the sin that so easily besets me. Amen. Rebound your heads. Father, I thank you so much. I thank you that you're a good father. God, that you speak to us in so many different ways, God. And father, I thank you for this house, God, that yes. Lord has made a stand, drawn a line in the sand, as Pastor Lloyd said, that says we are no longer where we are. We are moving out of exile. Amen. So, Father, help us to make wise decisions. To not go backwards, but to go forward all the way for you, Father. We honor you and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you glad we came to house from the Lord? Come on. Are you glad for Pastor Steve the Lord? That was amazing. Amazing. Amazing, amazing. Yeah. I got so encouraged. Yeah, yeah, I got so encouraged, and I got some, I got some revelation, and it was amazing. Well, I'm going to invite Veronica up to the front. We're going to give, she's going to give us some instructions about yeah. our call out room, mm -hmm. and then what we're doing, also about our lunch that's provided. Amen. Amen. Amen.